good day everyone welcome 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 to another live with women doing eat afraid so i'm just right now the topic simple strategies to get your business going welcome 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 hello my amazing guest hello kemis hello 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 I am excited for today's conversation. I see that my ladies are here with their questions ready. <laughs> welcome everyone, welcome. So today's conversation is about strategies to get our business going. Um, and I already have my guest on live, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite her pretty soon. Um, you know, just quick facts here. Um, Get your questions ready because it's going to be really interactive um let me know if when, whatever we say during the live that stands out to you put in the comment section feel free to share this live with your friends if you know they have businesses and you want them to be on this live so that they can get their business going it is very important that you share the good news by sharing this live with them today's conversation is about simple strategies to get your business going and in case you do not know we have um uh, next month, November 21st at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard EST, on, on, on Zoom, we have a, a virtual business workshop for the career woman who wants to start or scale her business. And my amazing guest today is one of our workshop facilitators. So today's life is just a tip of what you'll be expecting next month. However, we're not going to hold any good goodies back to ourselves. We want to share with you. Um, I'm going to invite her shortly. Let me do that right away. See, yep, she's right here. Great. Her, uh, she's coming on right now. Uh, let me tell you something about the reason why it's very important that this conversation continues. Um, if you look around you, our economy right now, um, what's going on in the world right now? Hey, darling. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Good, good, good. <laughs> So I was just kind of like giving people on life, you know, the reason why we need to have this conversation. First of all, talk about just COVID-19, which I know is a topic that's going to stay for a very long time. The reason why people definitely need to have multiple, multiple streams of income. And even if it's just one stream or two streams of income, but something at the end of the day, a stream of income. It's supposed to be flowing. It's a stream, right? And people have realized there is a need for that, even if you have a 95, or even if you're a stay-at-home mom or whatever that is. And then the whole protest going on in our home country as well if there's anything that has also taught us you know businesses suffered and, and, and societies are suffering communities are suffering we really need to just build our business or build ourselves or build our career because in building that we're also building community we are building the nation you know i had a random life yesterday with my, my husband and i said people forget that the country is made up of families if you build the family you build the, you build the country if you build your home, you build the community and the community builds the family. So there's always that connection between whatever we're building and how the, how the country or how the economy is going to be at the end of the day. And so I'm really excited for today's conversation about simple strategies to get our business going. So if you are a business owner on, on our life, just put in the comment section. Let us know what your business is about. Say, yes, I'm a business owner. Or yes, I have an idea and I want to take it to the next level. Or I'm already, you know, I'm already doing good. I just want to scale. Whatever situation you are in as an entrepreneur or an ideapreneur, put it in the comment section. Let us get to know um, ourselves as well. And, you know, I remember a post you did, um, you put up, um, Bay, about 45% of working Americans have a side hustle, 45%. Yes. And I, yeah. tell us more, why, why do you, why do you think that, that, because that, that number is huge. You would think, okay, you know, uh, you're a working American, you have money, you're good. Why do you need to go through that whole journey of being an entrepreneur, but 45%? Yeah. Why? Yeah, I think people, people have realized that, first of all, the, the barriers to entry to starting off starting your own business um, is really low you know you can start your business online so that's one thing the other thing is that people we we are all like there are a lot of passionate and creative people out there right yeah and so we want to explore other options outside of our full-time jobs so you know that's where the side hustles come come up and also some people are just just need to supplement their salaries point blank you know right. um, salaries are not covering um, you know, their expenses, their basic living expenses, and they need to supplement or complement 
um, their salary. So that's why they're um, going, they're starting their side hustles. And he said that the um, statistics went further on to say that, that that comes out to one out of every three working adults. Well, um, so yes. Three. Yes. Yes. That's, that's, a, that's a huge number. Um, yes. For those who are joining us, please let us know in the comment section. If you are if you have an idea, let us know what that idea is. Or just say, yes, I have an idea. I want to start. Or if you're an entrepreneur, let us know in the comment section what your business is about as well. And before I start digging through your mind, Bay, I want you to also sure. introduce yourself. Um, let's do the introductions. Um, so let us know who you are. I feel like I know your audience already. Right? But <laughs> I am Bayadee Simpson. Um, you can call me Bay. And I'm the founder of the Entrepreneurs Nook, where I help women who are working nine to five full time jobs um, start and grow their side hustle. And um, I started to do a lot more coaching than um, business strategy okay. um, because I realized that coaching carries um, a, a person through, you know, their journey right. longer than just, you know, a strategy session. So. I am a business coach and I coach women. I help them to um, build the businesses that they dream of and make it a reality for them. And like you said, it's because um, I, you know, I, I firmly believe that, you know, having more than one source of income is, it's no longer nice to have. It's an, it's an absolute Indeed. necessity. Right. Yeah. So let, let us know your story because okay. you're, you're a, a working testament of your story. Um, yeah. As well, so let us know your story. I from from your story, we're going to learn a lot of lessons. So go on, go on. Okay, so my story um, starts. My story of entrepreneurship goes back to first of all, I'll say my parents who were both gainful, gainfully employed, but they had a bookstore, um, and we would go there on Saturdays to help them in their bookstore. Um, but I didn't even realize that you know it was something. It was a second job. It just felt like a fun thing to do. So right. that was my first exposure to entrepreneurship. But it became, you know, even it came, it became even more important through my own series of layoffs. So over mm -hmm. the course of my career, I've been laid off three times, and that's not to say I'm a bad employee. I've just been, <laughs> I've just been <laughs> caught in the crosshairs of right. um, layoffs and restructures. So the first one happened um, when I was in university. I was in my either my senior, in my you know my um, second um, freshman year. Um, in uni no, sorry, what's freshman? Junior year, that's the third year. Junior year in university. And that was right after um, September 11th. And um, I was working for a car rental company, a European car rental company. And, um, you know, things were not moving as they were um, pr pr prior to September 11th. People were not traveling as much. So that was my first layoff. It didn't hurt too much because I was still under, you know, my parents' roof, still getting the allowance. You know, everything was... Um, doing was okay, but seven years later, mm -hmm. now I had a mortgage, I had a car note, I felt like I was doing really well, I had a really nice job that, you know, was comfortable, and, um, you know, now this time around, it was another European company, but it was a, an Irish company, um, same thing, you know, they were in the airline and travel industry, and, um, you know, my, um, my the controller, my manager called me into the conference room with um, the company lawyer to say that they were going to be um, cutting down um, staff and that unfortunately I was going to be one of those that would be let go and the the lawyers lead um, an envelope um, to me across the desk with you know um, the terms and conditions if I stayed an extra three months I would get my bonuses for the year right and all that stuff so um, that was the second one and that one stung a little bit but then again you know thankfully uh -huh. Hmm. Sorry? No, go on. I was asking you, you had a third one as well. Yes. So it stung a little bit because, you know, I was in my early 20s, not the most financially responsible person at the time, but my parents were able to come to my rescue and I was able to get a job three months later. And then uh, fast forward another seven years um, later, um, now I was working, I was, I was at the peak of my career because I was in a managerial position and I, I was working for a consulting firm and they started to do what they called um, rebalancing, normalizing. They didn't call it restructure. Okay. They called it rebalancing, normalizing. And so they started, there was a mass layoff of 500. Um, staff, wow. But I wasn't, I wasn't included in that number. And so I started to think to myself, well, you know, this 
might be coming because I'm in mid, mid management. Um, mm. This might be coming. So I started to think about what I wanted to do. And that's when I went back to, okay, you know, I don't know how to braid hair. I don't know how to bake <laughs> cakes. Mm. I don't know how to do much with my hands, but I can talk to you about your business. Okay. If you have a business, because I found that, you know, I was, you know, when, once I found out that, you know, someone had started their business, I'll start to like, okay, I'm going to give you someone solicited advice. So I'll right. tell them that. Right. Um, and, um, you know, I realized that, you know, it was more of, you know, helping people with strategy. I have a master's and a, um, an undergraduate degree in business. So um, I guess that's where it, it, it all came from. So I would, uh, you know, help people. So I figured out, okay, I want other women like me to have the opportunity to start businesses while they are working nine to five so that when they get laid off, if they get laid off, um, they will have something to fall back on. Because I realized that, you know, corporate America is great. Um, but they also are looking out for their bottom line, their stakeholders, and you have to look out for yourself. So that's how the Entrepreneur's Nook um, was mm -hmm. born. It was born from three layoffs, but the third layoff, I was more prepared. Um, I was ready for that layoff. I saw it coming, it happened, and you know, life went on. I love that, I love that. Yeah. You see me looking this way, I'm typing or I'm looking at my questions for you. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't <laughs> worry. This is joining us. We're talking about simple strategies to get your business going. And we just had Bay um, give us a summary of her life journey and the reason how Entrepreneurs New came to, came to be. And in case you don't know, she's one of our workshop facilitators next month when we're having our online business workshop for the career woman who wants to start or scale her business. And I always say, if you come for that workshop, or even if you're on the live right now, whatever we talk about, even if we say career women and all, all that, anyone who's in business can take any of these tips we're sharing and really, really implement it. But just saying career woman, because I, I just have that notion that sometimes the career woman is um, a little bit put aside. If, if you talk about having a business, almost like, why do you want to have a business? You cannot be successful at both. But there's a reason why in our climate right now, even as a career professional, you definitely need to have some sort of side hustle or some sort of side business. All right, yeah. so hey, going back to your question, you talked about, you know, you said you couldn't do things with your hand. You couldn't bake or you couldn't do hair, but you give advice to people when they want to start their business. So I think that probably is the first strategy to getting your business going. I would say it's finding out the things that you're really good at was that, what do you think about that? Exactly. So it's assessing your skills, whether it's your skills that you use in your professional job or skills that you have that you use at home or, you know, outside of your nine to five. It's assessing what you have currently that will not require you getting like additional education or training at this point. Like, what do you have? Like, there's a quote, like, use what you have in your hands. Right. Cool. You know, so what do you have? Like, what do you know? What can you leverage right now? What do you have that um, can solve a pain point that can help another person so that would be the first thing is assessing your current skills and what about and what about your multi-talented because i think that's another thing a lot of women we go through we've got so much in our hands so much in our yeah. mind how do we really refine it you know how do we say okay this is the business i want to focus on yeah so prioritizing so again it goes back to what are the startup costs for what you want to do um what is the what is the skill that you have that one lights you up that you enjoy right. and has a low low startup cost like what can you start without having to go to the bank to get a loan or without dipping heavily into your savings like what can you start that you know that what can you start without having to do too much like without having to spend too much is what i would say you should start to um, look at but definitely prioritize you know if you have if you have so many skills and talents that you know that you don't know where to start from you know select your top three and then start to do a process of elimination but a good guide is to look at what requires the least amount of time mm -hmm. for you to start money for you to start effort for you to start and something that definitely lights you up that you enjoy awesome i love the comments um and so if you're watching and you are you have questions please feel free to put it in the, in the comment section or something stand out to you put it there as well if you have you know if you're someone who's probably struggling with multiple ideas this, i think for me this would be a good time for you to get free consultation from bay <laughs> <laughs> yes you might as well out out on the comment section so that we can go through your questions and also help you answer this as well all right so let's talk about um strategies now so what are what are the strategies to really get our business going 
Yeah, so I always like to level set when we talk about strategies because your strategy is really your game plan. Right. But with everything, um, I say that your mindset okay. plus your strategy is going to give you your your goal, whether that's your business goal of monetizing, starting your business, whatever your goal is. It all starts with your mindset and then right. having a game plan. Your mindset is, you know, your thinking. What what are you thinking about? Um, what are you saying to yourself? What, how do you feel about starting your business? You know, you've got to address that area first and then have a game plan. So with regards to strategies for starting your business or getting your business going, oh, Hold on. You can't, just, you can't just move that quickly. You know, I know I love mindsets. <laughs> but let, let's, take I, it, let's take it back a little bit. You okay, know, good. Part. I know you just talked about it briefly, but I think that's yeah. really key. So the reason why you want to have a business yeah. Because that will yes. really, that, that's a, a huge foundation of if that business will be, sus, will be sustainable as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I know um, you talk about people want to have a, maybe a side hustle either because they want to supplement their income, they have a goal or they, you know, their long-term plan, proof of concept in yeah. case they want to leave the nine to five, they, so they, they want to know what they're going to get to. So that yeah. mindset part, I think is really, really the, the foundation before we even talk about strategies. Exactly. You're right. I didn't want to like launch into my whole mindset <laughs> spiel. I didn't want to take too much time. It's okay. but I personally, yeah. <laughs> I personally believe that mindset is like 80% of your success. Mm. Once you can like nail your mindset and get it right. Right. Um, and then you have your game plan to go along with you. You're good to go. So in terms of mindset for, to get you going, why are you, um, starting your business you know why are you starting this side hustle you know um what is your why what is the reason why um you're starting and most of the time you have to have a very compelling why for you to stay in it long enough so right. are you starting it because you know you've talked about complementing or supplementing your salary so yes supplementing your salary if you know your salary what you have is not enough for, to cover you know your expenses your bills all that so you're supplementing it now you buy me complementing it because you know you have a kid that is multi-talented but you have to put in like some kind of special basketball training right. you know, you, 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 and you want to be able to you know pay for that expensive training without dipping into your savings and you know, without, you know, of course, um, putting yourself in the red. So that's the reason why you want to complement your salary. Now, you might have some projects, you know, are you um, looking to buy your first home or start investing in rental mm -hmm. property? You mm -hmm. know, that's a good way. Do you, are you passionate about something? Um, so is there a mission that you want to support? Are you right. willing to go on a mission strip? You know, those are like the like the quick, like everyday reasons why. Of course, there's the larger part where it's, you know, you want to create an impact. You know, you want to impact other people. You want to bless other people with right. your skills, with your talent. So really addressing and understanding the why is what is going to help you stay in the game. Because when things get tough or when you're discouraged, it's always good to go back yeah. to that why like why you're why you started it um it's really going to help you and that 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 also goes back to like the mindset work i was talking about like doing a lot of deep mindset work to understand that you know you're in it for x reason and you're committed to it you're not you know wishy-washy about it you've decided that you want to start your business and here's why and you're committing to it so that's yeah, the mindset piece. yeah I, I just wanted us to talk about mindset a little good like you said yeah. So it's almost you said it was like 80 percent or 90 percent of of the work you know because it would definitely get tough you might start a yeah. business because they're passionate about maybe coaching people you know about their own business but there are other part of businesses that are not really fun maybe tax maybe human research maybe the admin part you know and all that so that whole mindset as to why am i in this would definitely keep you in um long term so i wanted us to just talk about that and also just like i said not wishy-washy not because it's trendy not because everybody's exactly. um it looks easy on paper um yeah. there really is uh, a lot of work involved in definitely having a side hustle because yeah. that's a business all right so let's move on to strategies um what are the simple strategies that we can use to get our business going okay so we've talked about assessing your skills you know so right. assessing the skills that you have and then aligning it with a pain point 
your business has to solve a sol has to be a, a solution to a problem. It has to be something that is of value to somebody else. So once you've addressed those things, next thing is to get out there, meet people, right. tell them who you are, tell them how you can help them and make an offer. You don't have a business or you won't have any transactions, any monetary tra transactions if you don't make an offer. A lot of times we start our businesses without working on the sales part, you know, without jumping into selling. And right. I'm speaking from experience. Um, I, for a very long time, you know, wanted to just give out free, free freebies Go because ahead. I wanted yep. to build my credibility. Right. And there's a time and place for that. But, you know, your strategy should be, you know, I've started my business. I want to put, I want to put it in front of as many people as possible, whether it's a service-based business or a product-based business. So you want to get out and meet people, you know, show up in um, relevant groups, you know, whether it's Facebook groups that allow you to meet your um, star client, um, right. whether you're meeting people in person, even if it, you're, you know, now we're not going out too much at the grocery store, wherever, be, be ready to, you know, tell people who you are and how you can help them and have your offers ready. That's the simplest way I can say uh, in terms of strategies. Now, I feel that whether it's a product-based business or a service-based business, it, the underlying principle or strategy still applies. It's, you know, putting yourself out there, you know, make, um, letting, letting people know how you can help them or how your product will be of benefit to them and then making an offer. But now the process right. might be different. For a service-based business, we're looking at, you know, how can I provide value? How can I let people know that I am the person to help them? And that's by, you know, telling them who you are, telling them how you can help them and right. provide value along the way. So it's that value that will um, build your credibility and convince or let them know how you can help them. Now, for a product-based business, you know, you're still showing up and you're still telling them how your product will be of benefit to them. But the process might be different in terms of, you know, the way you position your product, you know. Is it, um, are you into fashion? Do you make like maybe um, custom hats? You know, the way, the pictures that you put online, you know, showing people using and, 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 and enjoying the product that you create will be different versus, you know, someone who's service-based where it's more, you know, let me tell you what I can do. I'm giving you value. You know, my testimonials also will help. But for a product base, it's more of, more of a show and tell. Mm -hmm. You're doing a lot more showing, showing how people are using it, showing how people are enjoying it, showing mm -hmm. different ways people can use it. But the, the strategy is still, you know, the principle, like, like I like to say, still remains the same. You still have, you still have to show up. You still right. have to tell people what you do. And you still have to um, tell them how your product will help them, how your service will help them. And you still have to make an offer. I love that. I love that. Show up, tell people what you do, and you have to make an offer. And that's kind of like the underlying principle for both either service or a base business or product based businesses, even if they're maybe their marketing or the way you show up is different. But that's really what the foundation um, right. is about. So, for maybe, for example, like that career woman who has probably accessed her skills, she's aligned it with the pain point that she knows she's of value, she can produce value to someone else. So in terms of meeting people, in terms of, okay, so how do I start? You know, um, what would you say those strategies can be? So in, in, how do I start? How do I meet people? You talked about Facebook groups. You talked about online building connections. But what else? How you start first with your family and friends. <laughs> start telling them what you do. No, you're not... No. Now, a lot of people yeah. have gotten into issues with family and friends. Because family and friends, obviously, will take in as much free as you give them, you know. And I think that probably goes back to how do you really package yourself where you have to tell them that you're a person of value and you deserve their currency in exchange for what you're giving them. Oh, yeah. So with family and friends, in terms of, like, you know, letting them know is one thing. But when it's time to engage in business with them, it's a different thing, you know. Um, like I say, you know, for family and friends, you, you want to have your your scripts ready, you know, you want to have your, okay, for family and friends, you know, I, you know, before any conversation starts, whether it's you're showing them uh, um, uh, your package and services, um, um, what's it called? Um, maybe your, your offerings, maybe you have a, 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 a template or on a menu for what you offer. 
um, you mm. want to make sure you have that and you want to if you want to you, you can choose to build in like a family and friends discount so they know that you know this is a business it's not going to be it's not a hobby it's not a Thing. Exactly. It's exactly. But the reason why I say to start with your family and friends is because they are the ones around you, and you you'll be amazed that you know just telling people, okay, you know, now I started um, coaching um, women. I've started coaching full time women. You know, they go out and meet other people, and they might engage in um, conversations with people, and they might meet somebody somebody you know that who's looking for a business coach, and that's how that connection. Happens. Oh, you know what? I know this person. So that's why I say start with your family and friends. You know, but also you go beyond your family and friends to like you know showing up online. Um, back back when things were normal, you know, you could attend networking events. Um, a lot more, but there's still virtual events going on. So it's just you know getting yourself out there, showing up on platforms where you know your ideal clients or your rock uh, or your star clients will be showing up where um, the people that want you, that you want to serve um, mm -hmm. hands will definitely be um, a way to get your business going. Um, another thing I will say is also joining um, groups, you know, so I talked about Facebook groups, but joining like, you know, specific groups, like for, you know, women accountants, you know, um, professional groups like that where you can network or even some um, volunteer groups as well. I found right. that networking within and even church groups, you know, mm -hmm. volunteer, volunteer groups and church groups, you find out that you engage in conversations about, you know, what you do outside of, you know, that oh, group. And that's where you can also get the conversation going and tell people more about what you do and how you can help them. Right, right. I really hope everyone is definitely taking notes. If you have questions, I know I've seen a question. We're going to answer that later. Please put it in the comment section. You know, previously, a couple of years ago, I think it was kind of like almost a, 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 a spoken taboo to say that you're a career professional who has a business. But nowadays, even when you go on LinkedIn, you see people boldly put like where they work, maybe IT manager at XYZ at Google, but underneath they put, you know, um, women empowerment coach or business coach. Yeah. Because yeah. the truth of the matter is everyone has come to the realization that we're way more than our nine to five. There is more out there, you know, the different parts of who we are. And so I think back to the mindset really is embracing the multi part of you and knowing that it's okay for you to explore the different parts of you. But then again, the reason why we're having this life is because we know that when it comes to business, the game is a little bit different, you know. Yeah. You have that skill as a career professional, but then how do you translate into having a successful business? And they have been us about the strategies that we can put in place, assessing your skills, you know, aligning with a pain point, being on value to someone, uh, um, someone out there, going out there to meet people, you know. And then I love that part about if you don't make a transaction, you won't get funds. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 you won't. Yeah, no, you won't. You won't. I wanted to just add something about what you said about LinkedIn and having you know people add their profiles. So in my nine to five, um, when I am in the office, I sit behind a conference room. So it was um, our lunch break, right. and there was a director that was in the conference room with another person, and he was talking about his new hire. He was so excited about his new hire, telling telling the person who was talking to that you know she owns a uh, hair blowing you know one of those um franchises where you go you can get your hair um cut and blow dried for x num x dollars and he was talking about how you know this new hire owns a franchise and um owns a business and he was really excited to bring her on board wow. that she did mention that um you know just like if she had kids at home she would call her manager in the store to ask how business is going like you know and he was okay with it wow. like he was he felt like that was a selling point wow. for her the fact that she had her business of course i'm sure she brought other skills and her experience um to the to the role as well but you know things that the terrain has changed a lot i was just having this conversation with my with my accountability partner and i was telling her that um, if i had to change do things differently my linkedin page Mm -hmm. for my night full-time job will be the same one I will maintain for uh, my yeah. business. I have two different ones. Right. Uh, but, you know, like I told her, I would, I would just keep it the same because at my company, where I work, at the beginning of every year, you have to um, state whether you have any kind of outside business, mm -hmm. what it is, and then, you know, they have it on file. So the first year I started working with them five years ago, I told them about my business. So it, it, it created a red flag. So I couldn't continue with the um, app, with the form. So they wanted to do their research and then they came back and said everything was fine. Yes. And every year I have to 
I have to do it all over again. I just returned to work in October and I still had to um, fill out that form for 2020. Mm. And it was like, okay, yes, I have a business. It's, has it changed from the last, from last year? No. no. And then, you know, I, I was able to complete that form. So I believe that companies are open-minded. Some, and I was just telling my accountability partner, but because she was saying that she can't use the same LinkedIn profile because her company, her manager will think that she's not ready to move up in her career. Like she doesn't uh -huh. want to progress. So that's when I told her that you have to see where you are and see how, what works for you. So if you know that the people around you are not so open-minded and don't, don't throw it in their face, you know, uh -huh. then do what you have to do. That's but, true. um, but really what I'm seeing is that, um, there's more openness towards, and maybe because she works for a smaller company. Mm. Um, she works for a very small company, but maybe that's why. But you know, in my organization where I work, like you know, it's it's not a big deal as long as you know you're not um, encroaching on mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, exactly, and there's no yeah, exactly, exactly. So let cool. me stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that was quite interesting. That was really good. Now let's go to one of the strategies you mentioned about packaging. You know, um, if you don't if you don't have a transaction, you don't have funds. You know, and I think that's another thing that a lot of us might also struggle with, especially like career professionals. Is how do we boldly say this is what I do? You know, how do we demand that that money? How do we put ourselves out there? What strategies do you, with your experience, you know, would you say we can implement to say to get transactions going? Because I don't think it's a business. We want the business to be successful. Yeah. If we don't want to help what it play thing so what 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 um challenges do you have in mind yeah so first of all you know um when you're thinking about providing a service or um a product you know research what is out there already like what is similar to what you have to offer look at what a few people are doing and see how you can do it better or differently you know look at how you can do it. how can you add your spin to it that's the first thing Mm -hmm. And in terms of, you know, demanding what you want, it's really taking a stand for um, how you present yourself. Are you presenting yourself as a low cost, um, everyday low value like Walmart? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to be, uh, I don't know, I can't Premium. tell. Publix or... Um... Publix or Kroger, like, or Whole Foods. Right. You know, like, so how are you going to, how are you presenting yourself? And it all comes down to, like, really understanding your offer because one, one thing i realized that sometimes we don't we're not clear on what that offer is and we're wishy-washy for one person you say oh okay i'm giving you six hours of coaching for x amount then the next person four hours for coaching for x amount so you need to be clear on your offer you need to understand what the, your client is going to walk away with mm. what are they walking away with what are they getting you know know your offer inside out and you right. should be able to speak to it and it takes a lot of practice, you know, because one thing I realize also is that, you know, sometimes when you're not firm on what your offer is, because, you know, it's something new, you haven't done it before, you start to like dance around things to please the client, the prospect, you know, but if you're clear on what it offers or what your offer is, the value is going to bring to them what they'll be walking away with, mm -hmm. you can manage what it is what you want because you know exactly and you're confident in it you're confident in what you're going to in what they're going to get and what you're going to deliver you know you can demand what you want and i'm and i'm learning that now that it's it's possible i don't know uh, one of my some a lady in my um mastermind um one of my my former mastermind groups she put a picture yesterday on on um instagram stories of a gucci a pair of gucci um tights that were ripped and they're, they're selling them for $182. And so she was like, so why aren't you demanding, you know, your what you want? Your right. work, exactly. So some people were like, so she, she had another post that was saying, oh, but people might say that, well, it's Gucci, <laughs> but she was saying that, well, before they built, before they became Gucci and everybody knew them, um, they were not known, but they had the audacity to give mm. you like, the pant panty holes with rips and runs that normally like as soon as you see it you run back in and take it off <laughs> now it's 182 dollars because they know the value they know that okay you know for those people who are very you know who like the brand who appreciate the brand mm -hmm. they can put you know what whatever it is in front of them and you know they will get people that will buy it so you so it goes back again to like Believing that mindset thing, believing in your yep. offer, being confident, being confident in your offer, being confident in the value that you're bringing to the table. Because if you are not confident, if you don't believe that what you have is of, is of value, then 
the person you're trying to sell it to won't won't either. So and and if, if, even if even if they buy from you, you know, or you get clients, it will be sustainable because you don't believe in yourself. So I'm loving this conversation because it's a mix and match of the tangible and then the intangible. The tangible strategy yeah. is very tangible is like like for example gushi like you said wasn't known before but consistent yeah. right dedication exactly. I'm exactly. Honest, but it wasn't definitely a smooth process it's been years yeah. and years and years in the making and that's something we're really struggling with right now as i guess a generation is really want things to happen so quickly yes microwave society like we really want things to yeah. quickly yeah. yeah and another thing another thing that goes back to that mindset again is that comparison that comparison game. You know, you're seeing that other person who you feel is successful, but you're comparing your own today to that person's like five years after they started, <laughs> you know? Sure. So that comparison is also something that takes, so it saps your confidence, your energy. And it, I know it's hard sometimes not to compare, but you have to, like I say, I, and I keep on talking about deep mindset work. Like you have to do that mindset work you have to self coach self talk yourself self motivate <laughs> self motivate self everything um, to really put yourself out there and you know get what you want that's true that's true and you know even just going back to the why i think the why would really just guide that conversation as to what we want mm -hmm. why are we why am i having a side business why am i having a side hustle what's the reason behind this you know that will really pull us back into you know moments where we're getting distracted because distraction will definitely happen. We're human beings. We look at things. You know, we see our computers doing something else different. You know, we we, we everything when something is shiny, we want to get on board and we, we yeah. leave our halfway and then we're all over the yeah. place. So I think yeah, it's just really important to figure out why do we want to have a side um side hustle for sure. All right. So my next question would be, what things would you say can be a danger to these strategies um not working? So we talked about different things, you know. Um, yeah. But what do you think, what would you say would be danger, dangerous to this? Inconsistency. So like not being consistent um, with your business. You know, you're not showing up consistently. You're not speaking up, giving off. You're not uh, making offers um, consistently. Those are things that will not help your business. Also, um, not keeping things simple, you know, don't try and overcomplicate things. Very, like uh, this. Keeping things simple is very important because yeah, there's so much content out there. So that's why our topic is simple strategies to really get your business going. You yeah, know? yeah. Things keeping simple. things simple, you know, just keeping things really simple. Um, and another thing I talk about often is um, when you start your business and even is just not having too many offers. Don't start juggling too many balls you know i talked about knowing your offer inside out right. if you're if you have like multiple offers multiple services that you're offering um it confuses people you know they say that you know you have to put an offer in front of somebody seven to 16 times before mm -hmm. they actually notice it um mm -hmm. so if you know today you're talking about x and the next day you're talking about y um, what would you be known for? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, some people struggle with that. And I've struggled with that, with having just, you know, one offer. But what I say is lead with your signature offer or your main offer. You know, every time you speak about, you know, what you do, lead with that. And then there might come a point where, okay, you know, as you're talking to someone and you realize that maybe your other service might work better for them, right. then right. you can offer it. But, you know, you want to lead with one thing you know you want to be known for that thing and that's how it makes it makes it easier for people to find you and for you to find your people as well i love that so ladies if you have ladies gentlemen who's on the call if you have questions about what we're talking on please put it in the comment section bay is definitely teaching us on how to get our business going let us know in the comment section if you have questions she's talking about you know leading with your signature offer not confusing our clients with multiple things i know sometimes we are so multi-talented we want to do everything yeah. I am yeah. guilty of that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Yeah. But um, there's absolutely, I believe there is, there's wisdom in in peeling back, you know, I've really been focused and, you know, in building just one signature offer. When you get your client base, you can begin to pivot or sell other things um, as well. And in case you don't know, next month, Bay is one of our workshop facilitators. We have an online business workshop um, 
for the career woman who wants to start or scale her side business or a side hustle and she's going to be teaching us going doing much more than what she's even doing right now on the life is november 21st 2020 at 10 30 a.m EST. it's on zoom if you want to know more information or get details about the event check out my bio women do it afraid uh, my bio we have a link there you get all the information about that. All right, great. So basically about inconsistency, being really dangerous, you know, uh, being all about the place as well, being dangerous to see these strategies working. So now let's go back to your story. Um, if you were going to do anything differently as a career professional who had a side hustle, uh, what are the things you would have done differently for your business? Okay. Yeah. One, I would have kept things simple. <laughs> kept things very, right. very simple. Okay. Um, because when Tell I started... More about, more about that. Yes, because when I started the Entrepreneur's Nook, I think I had three or four offers. Um, you know, I had different offers and um, I was customizing them along the way for each person that I came across. I wasn't firm in, okay, this is how I can help you. This is what I can help you with. Just one thing. But I wanted to help you this, that, this, that, you know, and, and it just wasn't sustainable. So the first thing I would say is keep things, even in my, in terms of the tools I was using, you know, I had, I fell for the um, shiny object sy syndrome. So like, you know, I'm watching a guru or an expert um, talking about, oh, I use this system for my business. But that's somebody that has like a client base of like a thousand or upwards and me with a client base of less than 10 you know going to get that system first right. of all it was money that i was wasting and secondly you know it was it just wasn't sustainable in terms of you know what i needed the system to do it was too much for where i was in my business so just keeping things simple is the first thing that i would say that i would do differently instead of you know trying to be everything to everyone i would focus on my niche be committed to my niche and just right. you know right. offer them one service to start with and then go from there. So that's the okay. first thing. Okay. Any other? Um, any other? Yeah. Um, so yeah. So uh, oh, the other thing I would do is hire a coach sooner because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hire a business coach until two and a half to three years into my business, and I find that you know that mindset that we talked about my coach was able to help do like deep mindset work with me. So okay. that's one thing that I'll do differently instead of taking like a million and one courses. And that's not to say that courses are not beneficial, but right. in my case, um, I would go for the coach before taking the course. Mm. Because the coach guides you through. Yes. Boss is kind yes. of like and you do things by yourself, I guess. Yeah, you have right? to be self-motivated and disciplined to take a course and finish it. And like, what I find is that a lot of courses help you with the how-tos, like how to use this tool, how to implement, um, you know, a specific thing in your business, whereas a coach is more holistic, you know, and it things really get real. Like I say, with a coach, you know, you're in a vulnerable but rewarding position where, you know, you can be yourself and um, you're in a safe space. And, you, you know, there's, there's so many benefits to having a coach that I would definitely hire a coach before um, taking a course. Okay. Um, the other thing I would do is I would I would do differently is not play small. So I know we say start small, but um, think big, think or, big. Drink big or dream big or think big. But in terms of you know myself and my capabilities and what I'm bringing to the table and the value, um, you know I felt like okay because I didn't have big numbers in terms of my audience, you know I shouldn't go out there and offer X um, service and demand X amount. Um, so that's something I'll do differently because one thing is that, yes, in my business, I might be new to having people pay me for what I do, but my credibility goes back even to my full-time job. You know, we've, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you've delivered projects, you've, yeah, you know, hey. you've helped your company, you've helped mm -hmm. your company, um, save costs, you know, you've helped them acquire, um, big client, big accounts, big clients, those are things that you can use to say that, you know what, you have the skill set for it. It's not because you haven't you know, done that in your business right. that you don't have that skill set. So don't play small when it comes to your offerings or what you want to demand in terms of, you know, your services or your packages. So that's another thing I would um, do differently is not play small. Then again, you know, we talked about mindset, you know, I would do a lot of mindset work, like, you know, prioritize my mindset when it comes to my business. You know, I wouldn't 
think that my, because I, for example, I was talking to somebody who wanted to um, work with me for coaching. So I was telling her that, um, you know, my coaching program, the first phase is mindset mastery. So we spend four weeks on mindset. We talk about different things, you know, the first one is unpacking and unlearning. We talk about winning mindset, you know, selling mindset. And she was like, oh, my mindset is good. I've already done all the mindset work. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> you know, um, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot that goes on in our minds. There's a lot of mindset stuff, like mindset limitations, mindset blocks. So I, I would have, I would have been, I would have loved to like identify them sooner than later. And later, true. Because yes. they're always somewhere in the future. They really exactly. limit how far we can go, right? Yes. And so much of um, looking sharp physically, it's underneath. If the work is not done underneath, there's really the, you can't really go that far in your business. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So I think I've given you four, right? Yes, you have. You have more. <laughs> um, so, so the oh, I, have I talked about just you know leading with one offer? I think I already talked about. Yeah, that. you talked about that. Yes, when I talked about you know some of the things that are dangerous to the strategies that you wrote, we talked about so far, I said you know really honing down to one signature offer and not confusing your clients with multiple things. Exactly. That you're doing. Enter. Exactly. And then the, I talked about this shiny ob object syndrome. Well, and the other thing I will say is that in terms of, you know, um, just like, you know, your business, like I talk about, you know, your side hustle is it's not a hobby, you know, it's not unprofessional. So just making sure that even though um, my business is not, um, it's, it's a, it was a, it's a side business, but, you know, just make sure that, you know, my branding, my, um, you know, my, the way I was presenting myself to my clients, um, matched what I was demanding in terms mm -hmm. of you know, um, my the investments people were making. So right. I'm, not, I'm not saying to you go and you know hire a whole team, but like you know you can buy templates that you can use that will make your you know you know that will make you look very professional in your business. So little things like that will be what I would do, and not like go for the big systems. You know, go for the t the tools and resources that people with um, you know. Client, a client base of a thousand plus were using is definitely what I would um, do wow. different. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So if you're just joining us, Bay is giving us, you know, things that she would have done differently um, in her business. If, oh, I have one more. Sorry. I have do, one more. Please bring, bring it on. I would, this is the best way to learn. I would have been showing up live a lot more. Like, showing up live <laughs> <laughs> is one right. thing that I was scared to do. Like, I, I, I fought it for a very long time. So that's another thing that I would say that if you are starting your business in 2020, you have to have some kind of live component. You've got to show your face, your, um, you, you, your voice has to be heard. Um, you know, hiding, be, not hide, I don't like to say hiding, but just being behind the brand, working behind the scenes um, right now doesn't work too well. You have to, you know, you have to show up. You have to show up in person and you want your voice to be heard as well. And that's where that connection happens. That's where, um, you know, people get to know you, they like you, they trust you and, you know, know who you are. Yeah. They understand the vision behind your business. They connect with you and things like that. Did I lose the... Oh, okay, you're back. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> I thought I lost you first. All right, great. Uh, so if you have questions, put it in the comment section. We're talking about, you know, things that she would have done differently um, in her business. Okay. And it's been amazing. amazing. <laughs> yes, show up whether you're happy or you're, you're not happy. Do it afraid. I always say do it afraid, you know. Put on the camera and just start speaking. Price, the words would definitely come out from your, from your lips as long as you... You understand what your why is and so if you have questions regarding business or strategies any of things we talked about so far put it in the comment section let me go back to the first question that i saw on here i hope it's not disappeared um so when should a person get a business plan and do you have like a sample blueprint um business plan i do have my own feedback on that question but i'm going to let you let you take the uh okay i'm gonna let you okay i'll just say my thoughts on business plans so business plans are great and I think a lot of us get stumped with business plans, thinking that we have to create this elaborate business plan. Um, if I, what I say, what I tell my clients is that you're not going out to like a bank for funding, then you don't need to label yourself on a 50 or 100 page business plan. Your business plan should be a live document that you're using 
and it's your roadmap to what you want, what, what you want to achieve in the next, you know, 12 to um, one, one to three years. So, you know, you don't, your business plan doesn't have to be so elaborate. You know, you've got to know, you know, what you're selling, what you're doing, what your goals for growth. But it's a live document. Things are going to change. It's not static is what I'm, I'm trying to say. And don't get stumped on the business plan that we think about or that, you know, that you think about that has to have like all those different sections, executive summary, all that stuff. You're not go if you're not going out to get a loan, then it doesn't have to be so elaborate is what I'll have, what I'll say. So I'm, I'm going to hand it over to you. I, 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 that was also my, my, my thought process. I also second that as well. Um, I really think it depends on the type of business and I, and maybe also, like you said, you're not going to get a loan. Um, yesterday, I was looking at a business plan, and I think I had to take Tylenol after because <laughs> the business plan is so expensive. There is so much information. But then it really depends on the kind of business. So the yeah. person question, maybe you want to tell us what type of business, business are you referring to? That might also help us shed more light um, to that as well. But I know a lot of people have have been stuck with that business plan phase and they've not been able to take another step forward. You know, some people handle it different yeah. ways. Some people do proof of concept. Let me see if, if this idea is even viable and then they can move it from there. You know, some people, like you said, it's a live document. You make changes, ETC, and then you go. But at the end of the day, you know, what's the end goal for your business? Um, the loan? Are you trying to get investors? Are you trying to beat out the bottom investors? You know, why? Why yeah. do you? Why business plan so that would guide that conversation exactly if I yes. have um, any more questions if you're just joining us please check out the link that i put i pinned on there go and get yourself a ticket we're having a business workshop next month on zoom from the comfort of your home with your coffee your tea and your pen and your paper we have babies group talking about you know really how do we start and scale our business if you think this conversation has been exciting next month it's going to be even way 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 more exciting and way more impactful it's a workshop uh, and that means you're going to have notes you're going to have really tangible steps it's going to be really personalized um, and so you know what to do after that workshop is done and then we have also an online an online digital strategist so social media don't worry about social media next month we're going to we're going to tackle social media how do we use social media for our business during the workshop so get a ticket bit.ly forward slash wdia event 2020 i'm trying to check if anyone else has questions online here let's see okay so she says small business just to use um as a roadmap again I would say go for your business. You know, if you want to do a business plan based on maybe who are my competitors, what are they selling? You know, um, how long have they been in business? You know, um, what what marketing strategies do you have in play? You know, what is your financial forecast? If that's what you want to have, because you want to see it on paper, absolutely go for it. But don't let that be the reason why you don't start. Even even if I start as small as having a social media page, start as small as registering your business. I would say. Do all that while you're building out your business plan, but don't let your business plan be the blocker while you don't start exactly. a business. Exactly. <laughs> you yeah. know, I hope that's answered your question, Kemi. Um, I know some people are really, you know, really detailed and really particular about things. They want to know, is this business going to be viable or profitable? Absolutely, yes. Do your due diligence, you know. Are you going to open a store next to another store that's your, your, your competitor? That might not be the best idea, you know, but just do your research. You know, before you start a business, research is really important um, as well. You don't want to start a business that maybe is fading, you know, or a business that is no longer in trend, you know, or something that maybe might not be the right time. So all that research is, needs to be in play um, to start a business. So, so let me give you an example. Sorry, sure. Stella. Um, I don't, I don't know if there are more questions, but you know, I also get the um, question. Oh, I don't know what to do. Like, I can't think of a business. Ah. I do. You know, I don't know what to do. So I, I, first of all, like, you know, we're talking about working professionals. So I say, right. what do you do at work, you know, that you enjoy doing? So I usually give the example of the person that, like, this project coordinator who helps this um, consultant um, or project manager, you know, create PowerPoint presentations. She's so good at it. Mm -hmm. And this, the project manager she works with, you know, seems to get all the glory because he's the one doing the presentations, but she's the one that's, you know, perfected, you know, knowing how to put all the bells and whistles in, um, the, um, in, the, in, in the presentation. So if you're in that position, you know, there are women out there, there are coaches, consultants, you know, freelancers, service-based um, provi service providers who 
do webinars, who hosts webinars and workshops. Um, you know, you can start with like having templates, you know, um, templates that you provide and that you can sell. And then if you have more time on your hands, you can customize, you can create custom templates for, um, for them. You know, that's, that's something that is, that if you enjoy creating, if it's, you know, you can do it in your sleep, as they say, that's something that you can do that you do at work, you know? So what do you do at work that you really enjoy doing and how can you translate that into um, a side business for you to to start up with because I you get I get that like I don't know what to do I can't think <laughs> and because, it comes wrong with those people. because it comes what? so easy because it comes so easy we neglect it exactly because it comes exactly. so easy we neglect it and because we also cannot see the business aspect of it exactly the business aspect of creating PowerPoint templates they're like who we buy PowerPoint templates but you'd be surprised who needs that PowerPoint template exactly and because it comes so easily we are like there is no revenue in this or it's not a business but like i exactly. said I'm really surprised that um what you can do in your sleep is what people are trying to get their hands on right i'll give you another example if there are no questions so you know um with covid you know a lot of zoom parties have been coming up right. i have a friend who's now become a, a, an expert in hosting <laughs> zoom parties that she's being wow. paid for them because you know she knows how to get the com keep the conversation going she has found some trivia games that um can be played to you know uh -huh. questions about the celebrant she knows how to create custom backgrounds that guests uh -huh. can use she has found an app where people can take pictures on their phone and it creates an album of the whole event that is she's awesome. just great yeah so she's now a zoom party expert wow okay yes. i'm inspired for sure i am inspired i'm inspired <laughs> Yes. I think this is just really to encourage everyone online here. There's something in your hands that you can monetize. You can monetize your ideas, you monetize your skills. Um, really go for it. Be it if you're a full-time entrepreneur, be it if you have a nine-to-five. Um, start small, yes. Think big, yes. Don't get stuck up in legalities that sap away your inspiration. Um, you might be passionate, uh, passionate about, about an idea or you might be inspired with your business, but also know that there are aspects of your business that you might not necessarily like. You know, maybe you're a numbers person or you're not really a people person, whatever that is. Um, you know, outsource that to maybe someone else. Exactly. Your tax for you, sure, absolutely, why not? Yes. Really, really go for it. Again, this day and age, like we started this conversation by saying is, there is a need for having multiple streams of income. There's a need to to monetize your your skills, your 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 talent, you know, your gifts. Um, and if you're a career professional, don't let career be the reason why you don't explore other aspects of you because we know that you're probably multi talented. So use that talent to bring in something, bring in revenue, supplement your income, complement your income, whatever that might be um, for yourself um, as well. All right. So any more questions before we let our amazing bay? Um, enjoy the rest of her day. Any more questions from anyone online? But if this has been awesome. If you've had an amazing time with us this Saturday evening, um, Saturday afternoon, put it in the comment section. Say yes, I've had a great time. It's been an amazing conversation. I've learned a lot. Let us know. And confirm that by getting your tickets or gifting someone. November, November 21st, 2020. Let us all see you online. Let's have more conversation about this. Let's build let's skill, let's be better professionals and business owners. Any more? Absolutely. No, no. All right, babe, people see you online. Someone say, I see you, babe. Show up. Amazing discourse. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes, I had a good time. I'm happy to hear that. So we are coming up to about two minutes. Um, I think this is a good time to... Um, oh, I'm happy to hear that, Toby. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, everyone. For Thank hanging. you. Feel free to follow Bay at Entrepreneurs Nook. And follow our women do it afraid as well on Instagram. You know, sign up for her coaching courses or my coaching courses, anything that, um, that would get you going, get you moving. We are happy to be of service to you. And hey, we will everyone hang out with us. Any last any words you want to say before we call it a day? Well, I just want to tell people to just go for it, you know, just go for it and just get started. You know, take action, move. <laughs> move, 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 move. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next time, Bay, thank you. I appreciate you as always. You know that. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Stella. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Now. Bye.